Okay, so it looks like the phone has rebooted. So we're just going to skip through this again. And now what we're going to do is make sure USB debugging is on. So I believe this is the only way it's going to work. Yeah, about phone doesn't... We can't connect our phone, or phone to the computer through that way. So let's check USB debugging. Say yes. And then go to home. And then let's plug in our let's plug in our computer to the phone or the phone to the computer. Okay, and on your status bar it should say USB debugging connected. We can drag it down. And then it'll also say USB is connected. We're going to hit that. And then select connect to USB storage. That option right there. And then on the computer, we're going to see if the computer will recognize the phone. Let's go to computer, and then there should be two drives that pop up, or two removable disks. First one will be H. Let's go to the other one, computer again. So removable disk I and then H. H is going to be the micro SD card, the external one that you have on your phone. But what we want to go to is the removable, removable disk I, that's your internal SD. We don't want to put it on the external. So remember the ROM that we, re re we renamed? That's the one, okay, that's the one that we're going to be dragging onto this. So I already have update.zip in here, but just drag this over and say copy and replace. And then just wait until that's done. Okay, so now what we can do is just exit out of this. Then, don't need that. And go back to the full. Go back to this folder that we had on a desktop. And now we can go to tar. And first we're going to unplug our phone from the computer. And this is this part gets a little tricky, so follow closely. We're gonna open up Odin 3 1.3. We're going to select the same pit that we selected before, the 803 pit, and then only select the PDA, not anything else, only select the PDA. Let's go up, go to the tar file folder that we made, and then select the first one, select the i9000 kernel, not anything else, just this one. And then we can do is plug our phone back in but first let's go to download mode on the phone so again volume down power select or home whatever you call it and continue to hold and our phone should be in download mode and now we can connect our phone to the computer.
and then now we can start the process. Okay, then we're gonna unplug our phone. And then take off the battery cover. Take out, pull the battery. Take it out like that, put it back in. You can put on the battery cover if you want to. And then now we're going to go into recovery mode by holding the power, volume up button, and the home button. And let go of the power button. Okay, now we're in, now we are in recovery mode. So now what we do is select apply SD card update that zip using the volume up and down buttons. Now that we have that selected, we can go ahead and apply the update that zip, which is our ROM. And it will root our phone as well. Okay, it should be rebooting. But what we want to do now is take off the battery cover, pull the battery. Put it back in, put the battery cover back on, okay, and then we're going to go back into download mode, so again, power, volume down, and home, okay, we're in download mode. We're going to close Odin and then open it back up again. And this time, well, we're going to select the same pit. And then for the PDA this time, we're going to select the second one. So the one that says kernel. Make sure. Okay, that wasn't really focused in. Okay, so we select the kernel. And that's it. Now we can plug our phone back into the computer. And then wait for Odin to recognize the phone, and it has. And then we can, and we just wait for the phone to reboot. And you can unplug from Odin. And the first reboot will take just a little while, so be patient. But after it's done, then we can go ahead and look at the ROM and apply to lag fix. Okay, so our phone is booted up, and it's loaded on the custom ROM. So let's go to the program, lag, uh, one click lag fix, it's by Ryan ZA. It's up here. We'll go to that. And then it has like, oh, um, super user request will pop up, so we say yes. And then it'll have a bunch of stuff. So we say yes. And what we want to do now is install ext2 tools. And then select fire it up. And then the progress will be down here, and it's installed successfully. And then now we can select the one-click lag fix. And these are some other things that you can do. But the red ones are the things that you can't do, but um, for now we're going to select the one-click lag fix. And select fire it up. Now what you can do is select the size of the ext2 partition and I'm just going to leave it on the default but you can adjust it up or down. So I'm going to say fire it up again 
and your progress will be on the bottom. So when the lag fix is done, it should be rebooting your phone, and we'll wait until that's done. Okay, so the phone is done rebooting. What I went ahead and did was set up my wireless networks, and I also set up my Google, my Google account to access the Android market. So I'm going to say accept, and we're going to go ahead and download this program called Quadrant. <coughs> And this is optional, but um, I just want to show you guys what the speeds are for the phone. So it should be downloading, and you can see this cool um, theme status bar, or theme notification bar. So it's installing. Alright, so it's done. Okay, so everything you need is installed. Um, you can see that I have some extra apps because I use Titanium Backup. To restore my apps, you won't get these when you reboot your phone, but you can go ahead and download them yourself. So first, let's do a Quadrant Standard Test. And we can run a full benchmark, but first, let's go to Task Manager and make sure everything is cleared. Say End All. So all applications are closed, so now we can just press home again and go to the app. Okay, the app drawer. Then wait for the apps to come up. We can scroll to Quadrant Standard. And we can run a full benchmark. Okay, so we can say yes to see our score. And this is our quadrant test score, 1791. And as you can see, it's above all the rest of the phones. However, I've seen a bit better scores on the JM5 using the custom ROM, but this is pretty decent. And for a Froyo beta ROM or beta firmware, this is pretty good. I know for Froyo, it's supposed to be a lot faster than the Eclair 2.1, but for the Galaxy S's case and for the other beta firmwares I've tried, Froyo always seemed to be a bit slower. But in this case, the lag fix and everything makes up for that and this phone is good to go. So one last test before I conclude this video. Let's just go to um, speed test. You can download it from the market as well. Go to speed test. And then we can begin the test. And of course this has to depend on your wireless network, but you can pit it up head to head with your other like Wi-Fi devices and you can see how your scores compare. Take a look at the results. I've run a couple of them before. These are pretty bad scores. I was I wasn't at the same location, but the most recent scores are the ones that we just did right now, and this is when I was on my Eclair ROM, this is when I'm on the Froyo ROM, or firmware, I mean. So you can see there's a pretty big speed increase, and I'm really happy with my phone. So I hope you enjoyed this video review, or tutorial at least, and if you did, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later on the next video review or tutorial.